Hi, my name is Glenn Alexander Thompson. My contact details are on the web. My website details are on the bottom of the screen. Now this is a further video in the series which I am producing to expose and demonstrate the extensive corrupt conduct of the Victorian justice system and particularly of the Supreme Court of Victoria. This video deals with fraudulently fabricated orders and authenticated order documents which were fabricated by Osborne and corruptly issued under the seal of the Supreme Court of Victoria. Now to the details. On the 29th of November 2006, Justice Robert Osborne handed down reasons for judgment in a matter where I had issued against Macedon Ranges Shire Council and Colaban Water. On that day, I was delayed en route to the court and my Melbourne agent, Daniel Isakov, attended to offer my apologies. And because I was not in court on that day, Osborne did not make any orders and adjourned the hearing until 7th of December. However, from my discussion with Daniel Isakov, I formed the mistaken view that Osborne's orders had been made on the 29th of November 2006. So then, in the intervening period between 29th of November 2006 and 7th of December, um, I had an opportunity to partially digest Osborne's reasons. So that on the 7th of December 2006, I handed Osborne a written set of allegations and told him to his face that he had fraudulently fabricated his reasons for judgment. Paragraphs 1 to 5 of my written allegations to Osborne are on the screen now. Now, paragraph 1 I say, On the 29th of November, Your Honour delivered judgment in the appeal in this matter. Judgment was against the plaintiffs. As a matter of demonstrable fact, your substantive reasons for judgment are manifestly wrong and without any basis in fact or reason. For the reasons set out below, including having made contradictory written submissions to a different court of record, the defendants are also aware that your reasons for judgment are manifestly wrong. Now, when I say here, of course, that the defendants are also aware, what I'm really saying is that the lawyers were aware, that is, Gard and Delaney and the rest of the crew. Um, so I went to, uh, and then on to say that Osborne's reasons were based upon their, like that is, Gard and Co's specific misre misrepresentations before Your Honour. Then, as will be seen from that written submission, that is the one that I exhibited to Osborne here, um, the submission of major guard as to potable water was simply wrong and with no possible basis in fact or reason at all. I then said, I will be appealing this judgment. And then at paragraph 5, the question at the present time is as to whether or not Your Honour will award costs and in particular punishing costs in knowledge of the matters and facts set out below. And the further question is as to whether or not the defendants will seek costs and in particular punishing costs in full knowledge that the judgment is flawed and flawed at least in part due to their specific misrepresentations to Your Honour. So then the balance of the 53 paragraphs in my uh, written set of allegations adequately provided detail in support of those allegations. And at paragraph 13 I said to Osborne, your substantive reasons for judgment are demonstrably completely in error with essentially every substantive paragraph wrong in fact and or law. Now, my written allegations to Osborne reflected my mistaken belief that orders had been made on the 29th of November 2006. And then, much to my surprise, Osborne then went and made his orders disappear, uh, dismissing my proceeding on that day, the 7th of December. So, 
To confirm that no orders had been made on the 29th, I then ordered a transcript of the 29th of November 2006, and sure enough, no orders had been made on the 29th of November. Now that was good for me, of course, because it gave me additional time to prepare my Notice of Appeal. I then filed my Notice of Appeal on the 21st of December 2006, the last permitted day after Osborne's orders, which were made on the 7th of December 2006. Now, my appeal, of course, was not an appeal in the ordinary sense. My grounds for the so-called appeal were that Osborne had fraudulently fabricated his reasons for judgment for the purpose of denying and concealing the corrupt conduct of guard and the rest of the lawyers for the council and the water authority. Now, the reality was my appeal was in fact a set of most serious and grievous allegations where, and of course, my allegation of fraudulently fabricated reason, fabricating reasons for judgment is an allegation of perverting the course of justice, and that's a criminal allegation against Osborne, and vicariously the court itself. Now, five, five months after I initiated my, that so-called appeal, out of the blue, I received a letter dated 7th of, the May, 7th of May 2007 from Stephen Mark Edward, the instructing solicitor to guard. Now, that letter said, We have recently received from the court authenticated orders as made on 29th of November 2006 and 7th of December 2007. Well, the 7th of December 2007 was, of course, a typo. Um, it was, in fact, 7th of December 2006. Then the letter says, We enclosed by way of service sealed copies of those authenticated orders. And then Edward said, We note that your present appeal has been filed out of time in relation to the orders made on 29th of November 2006. Now, this was incredible. Edward's letter said that Osborne's orders had been made on the 29th of November 2006, whereas Edward was in court on the 29th of November 2006 and on the 7th of December 2006, and he knew full well that no orders had at all had been made on the 29th of November, as he was saying. He knew well that they were made on the 7th of December. Now, attached to Edward's letter, was two documents purporting to be authenticated orders of the Supreme Court of Victoria and bearing the seal of the Supreme Court of Victoria. Now, very shortly, I will demonstrate that these purported authenticated orders were overtly fraudulently fabricated by Osborne for the purpose of corruptly rendering my so-called appeal invalid and thereby seeking to conceal his own corrupt conduct, or at least to prevent uh, me airing his corrupt, the facts of his corrupt conduct in open court. Now, after receiving these fraudulently fabricated orders and authenticated order documents, my specific written allegations to the uh, Court of Appeal became that Osborne had fraudulently fabricated his reasons for judgment for the purpose of denying and concealing the corrupt conduct of Guard and Delaney and Co. And he had fraudulently fabricated orders and authenticated order documents for the purpose of concealing his own corrupt conduct. Okay, so enough of the background. Now to get into um, what these uh, august little justices of the uh, Court of Appeal had to say about these things. So, a number of uh, Court of Appeal hearings ensued. Now, for the present, the detail of those hearings are entirely irrelevant, other than the fact that I put my various allegations and the evidence to the various judges. Now, in relation to these things, now I've put on the screen now, 
Justices Buchanan and Redlich said to the effect that there was nothing in my allegations as to the fabricated authenticated orders. And in their written reasons for judgment, Justices Neve and Mandy said that my allegations were unfounded and scandalous allegations made in relation to the court. And then Justices Redlich and Beach said of me, he makes a number of serious allegations concerning the trial judge and the legal representatives involved in the proceeding. And then they said, no material has been advanced by written or oral submissions which might on any view support these allegations. Justice Redlick and Beach then went on to say that my allegations involve a serious misunderstanding of the evidence and its legal implications. So, I will now go on and demonstrate that the utterances of each of these five justices of the Court of Appeal, individually and collectively, were false. And they must have been known to be false at the time that they were uttered and written. And the known effect was to deny and conceal the explicit and abundant and unequivocal, and, and unequivocal evidence squarely before and well known to each of them. And the known effect of denying that evidence was to deny and conceal the prima facie criminal conduct of the very sophisticated fraudster Justice Robert Osborne and the corrupt conduct of Guard and Co. Now, just to make the point, the fact is that each of these five Court of Appeal Justices collectively and individually said that there was nothing, zero zip zilch, in my allegations, that my allegations were unfounded and scandalous, and that there was no material, either oral or written, which might on any view support my allegations. And they further said that my allegations involve a serious misunderstanding of the evidence and its legal implications. Now, in simple terms, these august judges of the Victorian Court of Appeal explicitly and unequivocally said that there was a complete and absolute dearth of evidence as to my allegations about Osborne. And they also said that I was imagining things because of my ignorance as to the evidence and the law. Now, on these utterances, I have a very low bar to clear. All I need to do to demonstrate the falsity of the utterances of these august judges is that there was not a dearth of evidence before them and that my allegations were not unfounded and not based on a misunderstanding of the evidence and the legal implications of that evidence. Now, for the purpose of demonstrating the fact of those fraudulently fabricated orders and authenticated order documents, under the, seal, under the seal of the Supreme Court of Victoria, I am going to use a clip from my previous video entitled Justice Robert Osborne Fabricated Authenticated Orders. Each and every matter and thing in the following clip was before and known to each of the justices of the Court of Appeal when they made their collective and individual utterances. In respect of the fa fabricated orders and authenticated order documents, which I am about to demonstrate, the question in my mind is whose idea was it to fabricate these things? Did Osborne say to Guard that he would fix it all up by fabricating these things? Or did Guard and or Edward telephone Osborne and suggest it? The certainty is that the fabrication and uttering of these fabricated orders and authenticated order documents was a conspiracy. Each party knew them to be fabricated, and no matter which party initiated the idea, it must have been done in surety that the other party would not balk or be horrified. A cultural problem is indicated. I leave my viewers to ponder the point 
while watching the following clip. In the following clip, viewers will see that Osborne truncates available verbiage and concatenates disparate available verbiage to formulate his fabricated orders. This modus operandi is a trademark of Osborne's fraudulent fabrications. He takes the available verbiage and then rearranges it for the purposes of fraud, a self-deluding black art, but on the face of it not learned overnight and probably well practiced. Okay, now to the clip. Anyway, um, the matter was then coming up for a uh, directions hearing. Then out of the blue, I get a letter from Steve and Mark Edward. Dated 7th of May 2007. And what does this letter say? say? It said that he's received authenticated orders as made on the 29th of November 2006 and 7th of December 2007. Well, the 7th of December 2007 was a typo. It was 7th of December 2006. So anyway, Steve and Mark Edward then says, We note that your present appeal has been filed out of time in relation to the orders made on the 29th of November 2006. And here attached to Edward's letter was two documents purporting to be authenticated orders issued out of and with the authority of the Supreme Court of Victoria. Well, let's have a look at these. The first of these purportedly dated the 29th of November 2006. Down at the bottom it says, The court orders that. 1. The appeal should be dismissed and there be judgment for the defendants. Well, immediately on the face of it, damn thing is not even an order for God's sake. The appeal should be dismissed? That's no order. That's something that's yet to happen, could happen, maybe happen, may not even happen. God Almighty, what an absolute damn disgrace. So anyway, I'll discuss this one a little bit further. I'll just come on to the second order that uh, Edward included with his letter. Then the second of these documents that Edward sent purports to be an authenticated order stamped by the court purportedly dated the 7th of December 2006. And it says at the bottom the court orders that the plaintiffs pay the defendant's costs of the appeal on an indemnity basis. Well, the problem is there's a couple of orders missing. Osborne made a number of orders on the 7th of December, but he made absolutely none on the 29th of uh, November. So now we'll have a look at what the truth is. Now this is a, uh, a picture of the uh, final page of the transcript of 29th of uh, November 2006. And there's not an order in sight. No orders at all. Osborne just adjourned it until the 7th of December, which is of course when I told him he was a fraudster. Now we'll have a look at the transcript of the 7th of December. Remembering that the supposed authenticated order merely sets out one order. Now, we find that on the 7th of December, the truth is that Osborne, and I've underlined these in three separate colours, red, blue and green. Now, the first order was, firstly, that the appeal be dismissed, now in blue. Secondly, that there be judgment for the defendants, now in green. Thirdly, that the plaintiffs pay the defendants' costs of the proceeding, including the costs of the appeal, on an indemnity basis. So now I will show you how Osborne, using his trademark fab fabrications, swapping and changing of words from disparate 
documents. I'll show you how this little fraudster did this. Now I'll set out his trademark method in a moment. But uh, first of all, this is just the uh, last page from the actual reasons for judgment. And we note paragraph 184 of the reasons say the appeal from the master should be dismissed. Now, immediately we recognise that the supposed first order from that first fabricated authenticated document has got the words should be dismissed. So here's our first clue. Okay, so now let's have a look at how little Osborne fraudulently fabricated this auth supposed authenticated order of the 29th. Now, in this picture here, I've divided it into three sections, and I've numbered those in green on the right. Now, the top section is the, uh, the, the order contained in the fabricated authenticated order supposedly of the 29th of November 2006. The middle one, numbered 2 in green, is um, paragraph 184 from Osborne's Reasons for Judgment of 29th of November 2006. And the bottom one, number 3, is extract from the uh, transcript of 7th of December 2006 where Osborne in fact made three orders. Now bearing in mind that on the 7th of December 2006 I made a written submission or more correctly assertions to Osborne effectively that he was a fraudster. Now, in those assertions, it was clear that I believed that judgment, i.e. orders, had in fact been made on the 29th of uh, November 2006. I erroneously believed that. But I had erroneously believed that from my discussions with Daniel Isakov. And that was where I'd formed that mistaken view. Now, <clears throat> it appears that Osborne, and now Osborne knew that I had that mistaken view. So, it appears to me that Osborne sat down while deciding how to fabricate this, and he scratched his little head, removed his wig to do so, of course, and um, he... Uh, concluded, mistakenly concluded, that I had misunderstood the reasons. And so, what he did to fabricate this authenticated order, he took a part of the last, par last line, the paragraph 184, of the reasons for judgment, and put that as the first part of his fabricated order, that is, the appeal should be dismissed. And then what he did, he then went to the true second order of the 20, uh, sorry, of the uh, 7th of December. Now the second order said, secondly, there shall be, uh, that there be judgment for the defendants. Okay, so he extracted the, there be judgment for the defendants. And he appended that to his extract from the last uh, line of the paragraph 184 of his reasons of 29th of November. So that he ended up with this fabricated order, the appeal should be dismissed, and there be judgment for the defendants. Well, of course, I mean, it's it's not even a damn order. The appeal should be dismissed plainly. It's uh, not even an order. Should be? God, might not even happen. So anyway, it's quite clear this little creature fabricated this. 
Now I'll go onto the rest. Just by the way, this bloke really runs a true fair dinkum kangaroo court. No doubt about it. Now in this uh, picture I've added a uh, fourth bit to the bottom. Now this bottom bit now is the, uh, the order from the fabricated order of 7th of December 2006. Now the fact is there were three orders made on the 7th of December 2006. So this little fraudster simply omitted them so that what we really have here is his supposedly his fraudulently fabricated order of the um, 29th of November 2006 is in fact a fabrication of addition and his fabricated order of 7th of uh, December 2006 is a fabrication of omission complementary I might add couldn't stand, neither could stand without the, uh, re the respective or complementary omissions and additions. So what we have here is two absolutely fraudulently fabricated, authenticated orders of the Supreme Court of Victoria, bearing the seal of the Supreme Court of Victoria. Now, the entire purpose of these fraudulently fabricated orders was to render my appeal to the Court of Appeal invalid because my notice of appeal was filed and served outside of the 21-day period from the fabricated orders of 29th of November 2006. Now, the directions hearing was set down for the 28th of May 2007. And it was clear to me that at that hearing, the crooked solicitors and barristers for the Council and Water Authority would seek to rely upon the fabricated orders to have my appeal struck out. The hearing came on before Master came, and the overtly crooked solicitors and barristers did rely on the fabricated orders and did seek to have my appeal struck out. Anyway, um, I was ready for this little stunt, so at the uh, directions hearing I had the copies of the transcript and so on, and um, I showed Master Kane that the, uh, the supposed orders simply did not exist in the transcript. So uh, Master Kane couldn't go ahead with his directions hearing, and um, he adjourned it with um, uh, to a date to be fixed, but he said inquiries will be made of the court as to whether the orders made by the Honourable Justice Osborne on 29th of November 2006 and December 2006 can be amended pursuant to the slip rule under Order 36.07 or whether the appellant must make an, an application for enlargement of time to appeal to the court. Now, of course, the self-evident fact is that these fabricated orders, there was no slip there. They were deliberate fraud. And here they were talking about fixing it under a so-called slip rule. So now we'll see what happened. So let's have a look at Rule 36.07. Amendment of Judgment or Order. The court may at any time correct a clerical mistake in a judgment or order or any error arising in a judgment or order from any accidental slip or omission. Well, there were no clerical mistakes here and no accidental slips or omissions. The transcript of the 7th of December still contained the exact correct orders which were in fact made. These fabricated authenticated order documents were nothing to do with a clerical mistake or an accidental slip or omission. They were deliberate acts of fraud. So let's see what happened. 
Yep. Sure enough, we get a further fraudulently fabricated authenticated order of the Supreme Court of Victoria issued by Osborne. Now this one is dated the 31st of May 2007 and it says on the 29th of November 2006 the court A. gave reasons for judgment da -da 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 -da. B. adjourned the proceedings da -da. then 2. On 7th of December 2006, after argument, the court made final orders. There was no argument, for God's sake. I simply pointed out to him he was a fraudster. There was no argument about it. And then, three, authenticated orders prepared after the hearing on 29th of November 2006 and 7th of December 2006 are by this order corrected under the slip rule. Well, every single solitary assertion there is false. There were no authentic uh, authenticated orders prepared after the hearing on 29th of November or after the 7th of December 2006. The fabricated orders were both uh, completed on the same day concurrently with one another and with very, very careful attention to the complementary errors of omission and addition or the rather deliberate omission and addition. And then this thing says that those fraudulently fabricated orders are by this order corrected under the slip rule. Well, they were not. They simply were not. They're fraudulently fabricated orders that were done deliberate. There's n there was no slip there. So, the simple fact is that those fraudulently fabricated orders stand as testament to the well and truly corrupt court the thoroughly corrupt fraudster Osborne. Then at the bottom of this further fabricated authenticated order, it says the court orders that. The appeal is dismissed. Two, there is judgment for the defendants. Three, the plaintiffs paid the defendants' costs of the proceeding, including the costs of the appeal, on an indemnity basis. Well, the true fact is, they're the identical orders that were in fact made on the 7th of December. Nothing was corrected at all. This thing is entirely fraudulent. And this bloke's still sitting in the Court of Appeal, sitting in judgment of others. God Almighty. It's he who should be in the dock. OK, I'm back again. Now, just to reiterate, Justices Buchanan... Redlick, Neve, Mandy and Beach say that there is nothing in my allegations and my allegations are unfounded and scandalous and that no material has been advanced, advanced by written or oral submissions which might on any view support these allegations and that I have a serious misunderstanding of the evidence and its legal implications. Well, these people had the copies of the fabricated, authenticated order documents. And the first fabricated order was not even an order. Nothing else was necessary. They had my allegations. They had access to all relevant documents. They knew what was going on. I, c I conclude that they were corruptly protecting Osborne in the identical sense that Osborne was protecting Guard and Delaney and Co. I conclude they were fibbing. I can't overstate the seriousness, so I might as well understate it. Now, that's the end of the topic for this video. Thank you for watching.